When Kukusaka was a child, he always admired firefighters. He harbored a dream of becoming a hero just like them. Alas, that aspiration remained unfulfilled. By the age of 29, Ku found himself in an unfamiliar place, drifting in an empty void. The last thing he remembered was taking the train home after working late. Suddenly, a holographic screen materialized in front of him. The screen displayed a message informing him that he had been summoned to another world. It also presented him with three life choices. Firstly, a brave a warrior of great fate. Secondly, a wise man a magician with power beyond common sense. And thirdly, a demon lord a dark ruler consumed by desire. Ku, believing it to be a mere dream, played along. He declined the option of the brave, feeling inadequate for such a grand destiny. He dismissed the wise man, aware that he lacked the intelligence for the title. And he refused the demon lord for the same reason as the other two. He inquired if he could opt out of the choices. To his surprise, the hologram congratulated him, unveiling a hidden fourth option. It stated that he would be endowed with substandard abilities and transferred to another world. The transfer commenced, and Ku suddenly found himself in a dense forest surrounded by trees and plants. The reality struck him that this was not a dream, he was indeed in another world. He checked his suit pockets and found his smartphone, wallet, and a few tissues. Pondering his next move in this forest, another hologram appeared before him, this time displaying a status menu akin to those found in RPG games. Ku noted his unusually high MP levels and queried its abundance. A new hologram emerged to elucidate the concept of MP. His gaze then shifted to a skill listed in his status called Full Assist. Yet another hologram materialized, asking if he wished to employ Full Assist to expedite the skill installation. He consented, and a deluge of knowledge inundated his mind. Putting his newfound knowledge to the test, Ku employed the item box skill to store a tree within his dimensional storage. Discovering the skill's convenience, he subsequently utilized Dismantle on the tree, reducing it to chopped wood. He then exercised his creation skill to transform the wood into sticks. Upon examination, he realized these were not ordinary sticks. They bore special effects, were exceptionally durable and incombustible. He was notified that his creation skill had leveled up to level 2 from usage, indicating an increased array of recipes available for creation as the skill advanced. Curious about dismissing the holographic windows, Ku found that they transitioned to image mode, enabling him to visualize them mentally rather than having them physically manifest. He then experimented with other recipes he had acquired. Ku crafted a wooden axe that boasted the sharpness of a metal one, complete with the effects of critical hit and hit correction. Testing its sharpness, he flung the axe at a nearby rock using his dexterity skill. To his amazement, it cleaved through the rock effortlessly. Acknowledging his partial understanding of the skills, Ku was determined that he could survive in this new world with the knowledge he possessed. Deciding to further level up his creation skill, he cleared a sizable portion of the forest. In doing so, he elevated creation to level 5 and acquired insights into the skill's development. It leveled up only after accumulating certain experience points. Experience was gained exclusively via new recipes, and using previously utilized recipes yielded no additional experience. Eight new recipes were now at his disposal including an unusual wooden chair with the strange effect of inducing sleep with a single hit. With an intention to reach a town before sundown, Ku set out. His journey was unimpeded by fatigue, thanks to his transfer skill, which substantially augmented his physical and mental faculties and granted him fluency in the language of this world. As his five senses were heightened, a scream caught his attention. He darted towards the sound and came upon an armored bear attacking a merchant. Ku had the option to flee, as the bear hadn't noticed him, but the desire to live up to his childhood aspiration of helping others overcame his fear. With resolve, Ku retrieved his axe from his item box and hurled it at the bear's neck, neatly decapitating it. After rescuing the merchant, Ku received thanks from him. The merchant introduced himself as Chrome, and Ku, pondering the extent of honesty he should use, similarly introduced himself. 
Concerned about making a strange impression while desiring a guide to the nearest town, Ku opted for a more mundane persona. Holding the armored bear's head he had slain, along with his wooden axe, he informed Chrome that he was a craftsman. Chrome, somewhat skeptical due to Ku's unusual appearance for a craftsman, questioned whether he had crafted the impressive axe that felled an armored bear with a single blow. In response to Ku's ignorance of the armored bear's strength, Chrome explained it's a rank monster status and the immense power it wielded, which could destroy entire villages during a rampage. Ku was taken aback, considering he dispatched the beast effortlessly with a wooden axe. As the sun began to set, Chrome expressed his intention to return home and invited Ku to accompany him. Inquiring about the abandoned carriage, Ku learned that both the coachman and horse had fled in terror. Seizing the opportunity, Ku offered to store the carriage using his dimensional storage ability from his item box skill, which had unlimited capacity. Chrome, astonished by Ku's skills, increasingly doubted his simple woodworker story, but accepted Ku's explanation of isolation in the mountains and consequent lack of common sense. On their trek to the town of Anan, Ku inquired about the world's workings, learning two crucial points. First, the world's skills were innate, divided into talent and intelligent types, with individuals limited to possessing only three. Second, contrary to Ku's unique capability, others could not enhance their skills through monster slaying. Chrome revealed that despite the rarity of highway monsters, he did hire an escort yet the mercenaries abandoned him in the face of the armored bear threat. Upon reaching the city gates of Anan, they encountered a commotion. The cowardly mercenaries were misleading the guards about Chrome's supposed demise. After Chrome and Ku made their presence known, the guards were initially dubious of Ku's martial prowess. To vindicate Chrome's account, Ku produced the head of the armored bear from his item box, which corroborated their story and exposed the mercenaries' deceit. An incensed mercenary's attempt on Chrome's life was thwarted by Ku with a chair from his item box. Subsequently, Ku subdued the aggressor, earning adulation from the townspeople and apprehension from the guards. Following an interrogation, Ku gained access to the city thanks to Chrome's support. Ku, now in Chrome's company, was awed by the vastness of Chrome's abode, which was more a mansion than a house. They were welcomed by staff and offered lavish hospitality, inciting Ku's desire to prolong his stay. Reflecting on his former world and finding nothing to return to, Ku resolved to settle in this new realm. The following day, Chrome pledged lodging for a month as gratitude, suggesting Ku dwell in an inn his company managed for a comprehensive experience of the town. Ku learned Chrome wasn't merely a merchant, but the head of the significant Scarlet Company, soon to step down for his son's succession. Chrome expressed his gratitude for encountering Ku before retirement. He imparted wisdom on the utility of skills, noting Ku's adeptness, and advised him to join the Adventurer's Guild. To be taken seriously there, Chrome suggested shedding formal attire and speech. Ku considered where to procure armor but realized, with his crafting skill, he could create armor from the armored bear's remains including a shoulder pad bearing its head. Donning his homemade armor, Ku made a striking entrance at the Adventurer's Guild, captivating the resident adventurers with his appearance. When Ku entered the Adventurer's Guild, murmurs spread among the crowd, he was the fabled bear slayer. Approaching the reception, the male receptionist retreated in fear. Ku turned to the other receptionist named Milia, who greeted him warmly with a smile. How may I assist you? she inquired. Ku expressed his wish to register as an adventurer. Milia, taken aback, admitted that, judging by his gear, she had mistaken him for a high-ranking adventurer from abroad. Ku clarified that he was, in fact, a novice. Obliging, Milia handed him a form and explained that after completion, he would need to undergo a practical exam. Ku filled out the form, noting under the appeal section, I'm not adept at handling rough situations, which made Milia suspect he was jesting. However, he assured her of his seriousness, conveying his desire to evade combat when possible. Accepting his stance for the time being, she inquired whether he was prepared for the immediate commencement of the practical exam. Ku, curious, asked about the exam details. Milia disclosed that it entailed sparring with a companion adventurer. 
Today's examiner being a former a rank adventurer rumored to surpass an armored bear in strength. They made their way to the underground training area, trailed by a throng of adventurers eager to witness the spectacle. Milia checked if Ku was comfortable, reassuring him that victory wasn't necessary to achieve adventurer status. Extracting his massive wooden mallet from his item box skill, Ku declared he wouldn't hold back. The mallet, though imposing in size, was surprisingly light, benefiting from an enchantment that fortified its wielder. His effortless swing of the burdensome mallet astonished onlookers. Jai's, the advanced adventurer and Ku's opponent, appeared, acknowledging Ku's formidable presence despite his youth and vowed to reveal the existence of greater strength. Ku, recognizing Jai's experience, resolved to remain vigilant. Milia signaled the beginning of the duel. Initially, both contestants stood motionless, anticipating the other's move. Jai's prompted Ku to advance, stressing that he was the test subject. Ku lunged and swung, yet Jai's nimbly dodged, advising Ku that his expansive attacks left vulnerable gaps. Suddenly, Ku retracted his mallet into his item box skill, gaining agility without the mallet's encumbrance, and narrowly dodged Jai's sword thrust. Retrieving the mallet, he then struck Jai's sword, shattering it completely. Milia declared the fight over and Ku the victor amidst roaring cheers. A dumbfounded Jais congratulated him, thanking Ku for the unique item box technique displayed. They shook hands, and Jais admitted his lofty expectations for Ku. Milia extended Ku his adventurous card, praising his remarkable strength and confessing her surprise at his swift victory. Although Ku attributed his triumph to his acquired skills, he withheld this out of respect for the instructor. Milia provided him with a guidebook on adventuring and offered a primer on the essentials. She delineated the ranking system, regulations and quest accepting procedures. Ku likened the system to an RPG game. She informed him that reaching rank B would entail injury compensation and a retirement pension. Determined to attain rank B, Ku considered his strategy. Milia recommended a herb gathering mission as a start. He inquired further, and she elaborated on the quest to collect naos grass, commonly found near the forest and used predominantly in medicines. The task, issued by the pharmacist guild, promised a reward of 400 cosma per grass. Ku deemed the terms favorable. Milia advised that a novice adventurer's initial quest requires the company of a high-ranking adventurer. Confident, she left to find an appropriate partner. Ku reflected gratefully on Chrome's recommendation to adventure and the generous gift of 80,000 Cosma. Milia returned with Iris Newt Fafnir of the Dragonfolk tribe, and a rank adventurer. Iris glanced at Ku, then affably requested he address her simply as Iris. Ku over politely introduced himself. Iris eased his nerves, advising him to speak naturally. To pair Ku's mountain upbringing with Iris's divergence from human norms seemed an ideal match, as explained by Milia. After Ku and Iris introduced themselves, they embarked on their quest. Along the journey, Iris inquired about their first course of action, to which Ku responded that they needed to collect information. He had developed this habit from marking cheat website pages when exploring new games. Ku admitted his ignorance about the appearance and habitat of Naos Grass and expressed a desire to consult the monster distribution map. Iris commended him, pointing out that the booklet handed to them by Milia contained all the necessary information. Upon opening the booklet, Ku found a wealth of useful data. Iris mentioned that Milia had authored the booklet herself. Ku, realizing he required supplies, led the way to the adventurer's street. There, they purchased a rope, a torch, a water bag, and a flint. Ku stored these items in his magical item box, whose capacity amazed Iris when she learned it was unlimited. She informed him that the item box skill was relatively uncommon and that there were more potent magical items. Demonstrated by Iris as she effortlessly pulled a spear from a small waist pouch, she explained that such magical storage was commonplace among adventurers and that Ku's item box skill was indeed atypical. Their journey continued towards Cello Forest in search of Naos grass. Upon locating it, Iris warned that it should not be plucked carelessly. It required a scooper for proper extraction to prevent the leaves from detaching. 
Ku cleverly utilized his item box skill to store and retrieve the grass intact, much to Iris's surprise. When they stumbled upon nail on a grass, marked distinctively by dark spots, Iris elucidated the challenge of their quest. Distinguishing Naos grass from its look-alike required diligence and patience, as they needed to gather 50 specimens before sundown. Ku, undeterred, activated his artisan's god's eye skill, which made all the Naos grass in the vicinity visible and greatly expedited their mission. An hour later, the quest was complete. As they traveled back to town, Ku probed Iris with questions, eventually delving into personal territory. He inquired about her dragon folk heritage. Iris shared that dragons, revered as the Earth's ancient rulers, were the forebears of her people, imbuing dragon folk with exceptional strength and longevity compared to humans. Ku's fascination and admiration were atypical, as humans tend to maintain a distance from the dragon folk out of fear. Upon their return, Milia was astounded at their rapid completion of the quest. Ku's explanation of their method impressed her, and he received the 20,000 Cosma as a reward. Congratulations were exchanged, marking the successful end of his first quest. Ku retired to an inn recommended by Chrome, donned his old suit, and scoured Milia's booklet for an affordable dining option, eventually savoring grilled chicken that he found delicious and worthy of the expense. The following day brought Ku to the Fado's Mountains on a new quest to hunt five lonely wolves. Despite his initial lack of success in finding them, he busied himself crafting potions, a healing potion with a mint taste and a detoxification potion he found delicious, using potion ingredients he had stumbled upon and the water bags from his earlier purchases. A lone wolf's appearance startled Ku just as he was testing his concoctions, and he prepared for battle with his sword at the ready. After the wolf appeared, Ku swiftly drew his sword from the dimensional storage of his item box skill. As the wolf charged at him, he leveraged his dexterity skill to cleave the beast in two, astonished by the sharpness of his blade. He proceeded to collect the wolf's carcass, depositing it in his item box, skill only four more wolf defeats were necessary to complete his quest. Suddenly, noises alerted him to a new threat, a pack of wolves positioned behind him. The wolves lunged toward Ku, who began to dispatch them with efficient strokes of his sword. Mid-battle, a notification popped up to announce he had attained a level up and acquired the automatic collection skill, which conveniently stored the fallen wolves in his item box post-mortem. In a grim turn, another pack of wolves emerged. Ku engaged in a relentless battle, accumulating an alarming total of 2,031 wolf corpses in his item box. With a mental note to report this abnormal phenomenon to the Adventurer's Guild, Ku began his trek back to town. En route, another wolf, a solitary female pregnant one that preyed on male wolves, crossed his path. Ku ended this threat as well, advancing to level 16. He pondered the progression of his skills amidst his significant leveling that day. As he considered pausing by a pond for a respite, he noticed two adventurers a girl and a boy clearly exhausted and panting for breath. Upon Ku's inquiry about their well-being, they initially reacted with alarm but recognized him as the renowned Bear Slayer. Introductions aside, they urged him to swiftly vacate the mountains due to a loose black spider. While they were novice E-rank adventurers here on a quest, a dragon folk named Iris, and a rank adventurer, had intervened to save them from the formidable A-plus rank arachnid. Driven by concern, Ku inquired about the sighting of the black spider, by which they pointed him in the direction it was last seen. Despite the boy's apprehensions, the girl, having trusted insights from the spirits, condoned Ku's decision to seek out Iris. These spirits she mentioned were potent, invisible entities controlling aspects of nature. If a shared trust in the spirits and cautionary advice, they let Ku depart toward the Black Spider's last known location. Activating a skill to heighten his auditory perception, Ku raced forth, preoccupied with thoughts of Iris's safety and an unexpected personal investment in her welfare. Approaching the sounds of conflict, he was met with the sight of Iris, wounded and prone. Ku realized the potential for a trap just as the black spider surged from beneath the soil. Here the chapter concludes and we wrap up this video as well. Thank you for watching until the end. 
The manga title is in the description and undisclosed in English. If you've enjoyed this video please like it, comment below for a sequel, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Appreciate your viewership up to this moment, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.